Finding new and cheap multiplayer games to play with your friends is hard enough. Which is why I've done some digging and found 6 completely free multiplayer games that you probably won't have heard of. Number 6, Rogue Company, a third person tactical action shooter based around a 4v4 and 6v6 game mode. You spawn in as an agent for Rogue Company, and with the help of some powerful weapons and explosives, it's your goal to take down the other team. It's almost like a fast paced CSGO, and by the looks of the reviews, it seems to be pretty enjoyable, especially considering it's entirely free. The art style is honestly insane, and all of the characters look awesome. So what's not to love? Well, there is one downside. Apparently online play lacks any kind of skill-based matchmaking, meaning it's possible that in your first game you could be up against some pretty sweaty professionals. But how could you not at least try the game out? You know, it offers infinite replayability and a pretty active community too. The only reason it is insane sixth place is because there are so many games just like this one out there. Number 5, We Were Here. Honestly, this one looks insane. Developed and released by Total Mayhem Games in 2017, this game offers a pretty immersive frozen wasteland in which you're forced to split up from your friend inside of a dark abandoned castle. And no, this isn't horror, but the atmosphere itself is scary to say the least. The only item you get to bring with you is a walkie-talkie and obviously it allows you to speak with your friend which is actually really cool. Features like that make the experience so much more immersive. If you're ready to find out how good you and your friends work together, then this is definitely the game for you. The creators said it was inspired by Myst, Amnesia the Dark Descent, and real life escape rooms, but does it live up to those things? Not only that, but this isn't a standalone game. This is episode one out of an entire series. It's the only one that's free though, but if you are willing to pay, you can find the other three episodes on the store page. And on top of all of that, that, there is still active development going on within the newer episodes, so it's likely that this series will be extended whenever the next game is released. But this game does have some downsides, which is why it holds the fifth spot in this list. A couple reviews state that the puzzles are too hard to complete, which in my opinion says more about the person who actually left the review than the game. But there is also one other review which talks about the quality of life and lack thereof. As this was the first game in the series, it's possible that the recent games haven't got these issues, but obviously those have a price tag so they don't qualify for this video. But if you want me to do another one where we look at paid multiplayer games, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel while you're there, it's completely free. Number 4, Deceit, one of the most popular games on this list. I've played Deceit with friends a few times before, and each session ends with an argument and trust issues. There are 6 of you in each round and 2 people have been infected. As an innocent, your role is to find items, fix things, and eventually progress through doorways and buildings buildings until you escape, all while avoiding the infected. The infected's main goal, to start with, is to act innocent, drink blood whenever they're alone and nobody's looking, and eventually pick off the innocents one by one until no one is left. It's like Among Us, but on drugs. It's hectic, unorganized, and most importantly, pretty damn scary when someone you know is infected starts chasing you. Deceit actually has 81,000 reviews, so it's definitely not underrated by any shot, unlike some of the other games on this list. But as it is completely free and has super polished gameplay, I definitely think it deserved that number 4 spot. But there's one issue, and it's got to be said that most of the recent reviews have had some negative things to say. Not too long ago, the developers actually decided to change some of the core gameplay, and although I haven't tested it, according to many it's not as pleasing or enjoyable as it was before, but that does not mean that you personally wouldn't enjoy it. Gather some friends and give Deceit a go because I'm pretty sure you'll love it. Number 3, SCP Containment Breach. An absolute classic. After watching streamers play this, I knew I had to get it, and lo and behold, it's free. If you have a group of friends, then this is definitely the game you want to try. The only reason it's in third and not higher up is because it obviously won't be everyone's cup of tea. It has a pretty old art style and a simplistic feel, so if you're here for a more realistic and immersive experience, then stick around until the end of the video. All of the maps are completely random, and the game mode is called Breach. Breach mode is where certain people can become SCP entities and then some are guards, and then the rest are tasked with the goal of escaping the facility. It's honestly a really strange game and quite hard for me to understand until I've actually played it, but it is an iconic
iconic one and something that would be so much fun with a bunch of friends. And in my opinion, the best part about this game is that it can be played with up to 64 players at once. That's crazy. There are a bunch of games that support higher player counts like this, but none are essentially just massive escape room games, making this one reasonably unique. And on top of all of that, there are constant updates and quality of life features being added to make the experience even better. For the cheap price tag of $0, you won't find many more games more enjoyable than this one. Number two, Stay Out. This is a questionable one, but the reason I've put it at second is because of how unique it is and how replayable it is. You can complete quests with friends, sit around campfires, explore secret laboratories, all while trying to survive the super hard conditions. You've got to watch your thirst and use your light sparingly, as your match count will dwindle pretty quickly. As is said on the official Steam page, the world is full of dangers and so-called incredible events. You become one of the stalkers, whatever that is. Apparently stalkers are people living the romance of the unknown, able to overcome any trials in search of artifacts on the territory of the alienation zone. Yeah, I'm gonna need my old English teacher to explain this one to me because I'm a little bit lost. But it's the curiosity that has me hooked, and it can't be overlooked that the graphics are actually really awesome. They have a distinct rustic style and gives me that nostalgic feeling of the old Just Survive survival game I used to play. But the best thing about Stay Out is the active development. Mobile Technologies, the developers, release almost bi-weekly updates and announcements to the community, and are clearly determined to keep improving the game until they're happy with what they've created. There are also in-game events with the most recent one being the Anomalous Spring event. You essentially had to collect flowers to get rewards. I'm sure it was more exciting than it sounds, but you get the point. You wouldn't get bored of this game, especially if you have friends to bring along. However, we have saved the best till last. Number one, Will to Live, an MMORPG shooter which takes place in a chaotic post-apocalyptic world. You've got to explore this world, scavenge things you find, fight mutants and other people to survive. And of course, if you're playing with friends, you can join clans together to prove your might. There is a lot to do in this game and for the price of zero dollars, it's a must try. Developed by AlphaSoft and released in April of 2018, this game provides an experience similar to the likes of Daisy and Rust, but it's far more unknown which is a shame. However, that is likely due to the Steam reviews being not as positive as the other games. The graphics are super enjoyable and the world is immersive with tons of lore, loads of dungeons to explore, classes to choose from, and tons of realistic weapons to use. There is even character customization, a character upgrading system, and item crafting. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There is much more to discover in this game and that can be proven by the multitude of people with over 1000 hours on the game. As I said earlier, this game is definitely a grind, especially by yourself, which is why you probably want to bring a few friends along with you. But I think it's one of those games that quite possibly could be dangerously addictive. And of course, development is super active with the latest update being in late April, which was a small update, but fixed a bunch of bugs and added a few new skins to the in-game store. The game has a bunch of different locations, with my favourite definitely being the Canyon Place. Give this game or any other game on this list a go with your friends and I guarantee you'll enjoy at least one. If you like this video, then watch this one next and have a great day.